it's Miss Terry in the library. We have another one of those great take and make. Yeah, take it and make it. That's the deal. Take and make art projects. This one is sort of a STEM, STEAM project. Science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. I like the STEAM acronym myself. This is a geodesic dome. See all the pretty triangles? It is a dome made entirely of triangles. Um, for some reason, you'll see in the video, I keep confusing the words geodesic and geomesic, and I'm really not even sure where geomesic came from. That's, this is a geodesic dome, desic. And I'll try to put a little comment on the video when I mess it up, because they do mess it up a few times. Anyway, let's talk about the project. So, in order to create your geodesic dome, you are going to take triangles and stick them together in some way. And that's part of where your creativity is going to come into play a little bit. We used staples on this one. We did another one that we did out of cardboard that was much, much harder to do. And we ended up using staples and packing tape to try to keep it together. Um, so I'm recommending that you not use, at least not heavy cardboard, not use cardboard. We made this one out of cardstock, which we are going to give you enough pieces of cardstock to make this style of dome. We scaled it down a little bit so that maybe it won't take up so much space and you'll have more options as to where you can put your geodesic dome. Let me show you what all is going into the bag. We have our beautiful Imagine Your Story story bags. Um, if it says geodome on it, it has the supplies for a geodome inside. Inside the bag are going some paper instructions from Instructables. Um, so yeah, if you want the paper instructions, they will be in there. We found that we learned a lot while we're doing it, so hopefully um, as the video progresses, we'll explain to you some of the things that we've learned, and yeah, we'll have a good time doing this project. Just for good measure, because it's a library, a bookmark, and some stickers. There will be two templates. Now this becomes important. There is a unilateral triangle. All three sides are the same. Those dimensions are A. There is another triangle that is not unilateral. It has two B sides. So these two sides are the same. And this side, only the base, is the same dimension as the other ones. That comes into play. It becomes somewhat important. So, you know, like, if you're not already lost and confused, thank your math teacher. And, you know, maybe show off to them later, because they'll be impressed with this. So those are going to go in the bag and a stack of a little more than 40 pieces of cardstock upon which either one of those triangle templates will fit. You are going to need 30 of the BA triangles, so the one that's BBA. You're going to need 30 of those. You're going to need 10 more of the unilateral ones. Those are the ones that are AAA all the way around. Um, so we tried to give you a couple of extra cards just in case mistakes get made because that happens. That totally happens. It's part of the process. So we throw in some extra just to make sure that hopefully you have enough. Rubber band. The, actually, the templates and the cardstock, and this is how I know that you can cut either one of those triangles out because I made sure that they all fit. They will be rubber band together in your bag so that they are not falling all over the place. I feel it's important for me to say rubber bands are for holding things together, not flinging at people, and definitely not snapping people. Don't do that. It's not nice. You know. Okay, so now I've said. So all of that will be in the bag. You can pick up your bag at the circulation desk. 
teen art project, steam project. Yeah, come pick it up at the desk. It will be available Wednesday, January 27th. In lieu of our Friday, last Friday art project that we can't do in person right now because of the COVIDs. Um, but we're going to get back to it as soon as possible. In the meantime, um, we're trying to bring you some take and make stuff. Yeah, because this is fun. We had a great time doing it and we're going to get into this video here where I show you how we did it. Oh, I almost totally forgot. Supplies that you're going to need at home. Yeah, because you need to know that ahead of time. So you will need a pair of scissors and or something like an X-Acto knife. If you are using razor blades and X-Acto knives, be super extra cautious. If you're using scissors, still be cautious. Um, try not to bend the, the paper, the cardstock too much. Um, be very careful with your template. You might want to cut it out of something sort of hardcore, like maybe the empty cereal box or something. So you have like kind of a cardboard because you're going to cut around it several times. The other thing that you will need is some sort of way to hold the things together. Um, we used staples on our cardstock one. Um, like I said, on the cardboard one, we ended up using staples and tape and it was a whole mess and like it worked, but it wasn't it wasn't aesthetic, like it didn't look good. Um, yeah, so we would have had to have covered it with something more, um, like some decoupage in order to make it look good. And I'm going to show you some math about how to figure out if you want to make another one or if you want to make different sizes. I will show you, I will show you some stuff about how to do that. Just a little math stuff, um, not super intense just some information. You'll be able to skip it in the video if you want. So yeah, staples, tape, um, experiment a little bit. See what you can come up with. Um, we were not sure that hot glue or glue was going to work um, simply because of how much time that it takes for that stuff to solidify before you can put any pressure on it and the shaping of the dome sort of instantly puts pressure on it. Um, so we didn't like the idea of glue. Staples worked, tape worked. We like the idea of decoupaging. Again, yours is gonna be a little bit smaller than this. And here in a minute, I'll show you exactly, roughly, how big we think yours is going to end up. All right, we recorded this process over a couple of days. So it's going to look like I changed clothes. I didn't, I promise. And it's also mostly just me. There's video where uh, my friend Jess's hands are in helping um, because we were working on the assembly of the pieces and such together. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. Okay, hey y'all, welcome to, you know, like the math room, I guess. I don't know. We are talking geodesic domes and um, so I started this video and then I found an error. So I want to stop for a moment and say um, human beings, like we make mistakes. What I had done was I had written the wrong formula and then all the math seemed to work except it didn't because I had the wrong formula, which means... So, so anyway, double check. That's part of the process. Do not freak out if you have made a mistake or if something doesn't work. Stop, rethink, retool, figure out how to do it. That's all part of the design process. Anyway, why am I doing all this? Because I want to know what this radius is. And the reason that I want to know that this works is because what if I want to change it? Yeah, let's say I don't want that same size geodesic dome. Maybe I want a bigger one. Maybe I want a smaller one. How can I convert it? This is how. Okay, so we know that around the base of our geodesic dome, there are 10 of the base of our equilateral triangle. So bear with me. I know you're like, what? Bear with me. So 10 times whatever this A measurement is, gives us the circumference. 
So that tells us how big around it is. And the reason that's important is because we can use that circumference to figure out how tall, because this is also a radius, or how wide, because this is a radius, or the diameter. We can figure out all this stuff. So hang tight. There's also an option to not do any of this and just get the templates and just make a geodesic dome. Also an option. Fast forward if you want to. If not, hang tight. Okay, so back to where we were. The circumference equals, in our case, 10 times 7. Um, but we could replace the 7 with something else. So 10 times 70, 2 pi r, okay, divide by 2. So now I get my 35 equals pi times r. Divide both sides by pi. Pi equals 3.14. Bonus points to you if you know multiple points of pi past the 2. If you come to the library and you tell me like 5 or 7 decimal points to pi, I will give you a sticker. Yeah, uh-huh. I'll double check you, but I'll give you a sticker. Anyway, okay, back to where we were. Woo! Three, 35 divided by pi is 11.15. And in fact, when I went and checked that with my handy dandy yardstick, that is correct. That is the radius of my geodesic dome that is out there in the library right now. So the reason this comes important, right? So it's, it's 11 inches high. I'm not crawling in any geodesic dome 11 inches high. Maybe I want to crawl in one. How big does it have to be? So let's say for a moment, for giggles, that I wanted to create a geodesic dome that was 36 inches high. Okay, 36 inches high. I want to create one that is 36 inches high. That's like three feet, right? Like a yardstick. You can't see my yardstick. Like, like a yardstick. Like this tall, off the ground, about waist high on me, yeah, so anyway, okay, 36 inches high, that's three feet, but I have to figure out what size my triangles need to be in order to create that, and remember, we are doing all kinds of approximating, um, you would go through the same basic steps if you were creating, you know, like a geodesic dome for NASA that you were going to build on Mars, but you would be a lot more meticulous about all those decimal points. Sure would. Okay, so, estimated. So, 10A, which is 10 times the base of that triangle, goes around the bottom equals 2 pi times our radius. We said we want the radius to be 36 inches. So 10a equals, and if you don't trust me, grab your handy dandy calculator and calculate this out. 2 times 3.14 times 36 inches equals 226.08 inches. That's how many that is. Then we divide it by 10 so that I'm getting this A all by itself, right? So divide both sides by 10. A equals about, that's what that squiggly line means, about 22 and a half inches. Then I use my formula for my triangles. So this triangle, the A triangle, that has all three sides the same, it is an equilateral triangle. That would be all the same. The second triangle, which is the one that has the base of A and then the legs of B, with B being about 88% of A. So in the case of my 7-inch equilateral triangle, that would be about 6 and 1 16th inches. In the case, however, over here of my... 22 and a half inch unilateral triangle, my B side is going to be 20 inches. And I wonder if you are freaking out like I did, because I did, I kind of freaked out a little bit. I went, that's not right. It can't be right. That's huge. That's way closer to the size of the radius than, like, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. Am I sure? 
there's a way to double check this, and we did. So really quickly, we did some of this cross multiplication that your math teacher probably told you about at some point, where we wanted to see is 22 over 22.5 20, over 36 the same ratio as 7 over 11? Because that was what our radius was. So we substituted with x because we were like, let's find out, what is it? So then we cross multiply, right? So 22.5 times x equals 36 times 7. That's, then we divide both sides by 22 and a half. And in fact, we got x equals 11. We were right, it just seemed wrong. That's one of the awesome things about math too, is you can prove whether you're right or not. And I have seen students in middle school prove that the textbook answer was wrong. So always remember, you can prove yourself right with math, or you can find your mistake. Either way, knowledge is power. All right, I promised I would tell you how big we think your geodesic dome will be. We think it will be about six and a half inches tall and about 13 inches across the diameter of the bottom at its widest point. Um, so yeah, that's what we think. If you didn't watch the math section and you wanna know how we got there and that doesn't make sense, you can go back and watch it. Um, otherwise, let's make a dome. All right. Welcome to the Makerspace. We have cut out our triangles. That is one of the most time-consuming pieces. So if you trace those and cut around the lines very carefully, you come up with 30 of your BA triangles and 10 of those unilateral AAA triangles. So the next thing that we need to do is fold the flaps and you will see on your triangles there is a bit of a corner if you've cut them out right where you will fold up a flap so that we can connect those flaps we found using a ruler to do that was very successful or the side of a table go ahead and fold those crease them pretty good do all your triangles that way and then you'll be ready to assemble Let's put some geodesic domes together. So we have our five triangles that are the BBA triangles. So those B sides are together, the A sides are on the outside. And we're going to sort of lay out how we're assembling them. We're using binder clips at the moment just to get an idea of what we're going to end up with. We did end up stapling these together. Again, with the cardboard one, we ended up using tape both inside and outside because of the pressure pulling them apart. You'll see here, when we get them connected, it wants to pop into shape because of the shape of the triangle. So once you have assembled your first set of five, you are going to add the base of the equilateral triangle to the base of each of your inner five, and then keep building. So once we connect two of the, the AAA triangles, you're going to see that there is a space where there are two A sides now together. That is where your next set of five is going to connect. And then you just continue to add triangles until you have created your geodesic dome. Okay, so here we have our completed geomesic dome complete with a little door there for maybe a kitty cat to go in there. Um, I'm, my cat's too big to go in there, but we'll, we'll see what maybe wanders in there. 
and of course you can design your dome differently but let's take a look at the innards isn't it pretty it's just so pretty so what we have here these are the flaps and we've stapled them together if you were to use cardboard it is harder to staple and um yeah so you might want bigger staples it also might be hard to get in there we noticed that some of these were really difficult to do and i was hoping that you would be able to see from inside here like this is our center five of those triangles that are the a b b so all the b sides are together leaving the a sides on the outside but then this triangle here also this triangle here maybe you can see me pointing at this one better is one that is all the a's so this is one of those equilateral triangles okay this part right here this this is five triangles right and these are the B sides and these are the A sides. Then we have A, 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 A. Then this five section bit right here is another one of those with the B sides together. Does that make sense? This would be a lot easier if we were together. If you get lost, the instructions are in there in the bag so you can see how it lays out. You can always come and ask me questions and I would love to see what you create. It's just so pretty.